Hey guys, uh, Eric Lowe here from Swordwind Historical Swordsmanship again, uh, and I'm joined again by Ryan Neal from Swordwind and the Vulgar Skill. Uh, as it is May, and we here at Swordwind wish that the 4th may be with you, we thought we'd uh, talk about something that you hear a lot of in you hear a lot about uh, as a Star Wars geek and a sword geek which is what about lightsaber forms um so we're gonna start off by talking about just uh it, for those of you who may not know you know where do these come from in the fandom yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, 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 the whole idea of lightsaber forms comes uh, from a, an old Star Wars Insider article called Fight Saber, uh, which briefly laid out the idea of uh, there being seven types of lightsaber uh, combat. Uh, this was back between episodes one and two, um, and a lot of people, including us, thought this was super cool. So cool. <laughs> uh, and subsequent authors kind of took the idea of these uh, these these seven forms and sort of ran with them. So um, in case you don't know, and because it's gonna be relevant for the discussion that follows, um, why don't we talk a little bit about like what the seven forms are. So the seven forms, you see them like, and the way they're often portrayed is they focus on different Stratagems like some are supposed to be more defensive and others are more aggressive, and some came out of a need to fight other lightsaber users ver versus like how to fight blasters, and this kind of resulted in a strange way for martial arts to develop. But let's kind of go over them. There's Form One Shicho, and it, they're numbered in the order they were created, ostensibly depending on the lore. Um, Shi Cho appears to just be the basics of lightsaber fighting, so it's always been like the vaguest and haziest form besides Kit Fisto does it in its sword fighting. Which, by the way, as like people who do sword fighting, the idea that fighting with metal swords is somehow like basic and uh, non-technical is not true. Not true, and it it's unclear to me what niche she Cho is supposed to fit besides like oh these are your basic like eight cuts which is the way a lot of people portray it in reconstruct lightsaber combat which are you saying makashi doesn't have the basic cut? anyway the four two um makashi uh is a reaction to having to fight other lightsaber users which is interesting because it tends to be portrayed as the dueling style that this is where the jedi sith religious schism has kind of happened. Uh, the Jedi have gone beyond the proto-saber, where it's like hooked to a belt pack, and the Sith are still sometimes using Sith swords, and sometimes they're using lightsabers now, so now we have to get good at actually fighting other lightsabers in duels. For Which is the sort of thing that makes like people like us go nuts, because why is that different than fighting another sword? Yeah. And why would I have such a specialized form for just fighting other people? Like, that's not a reality of defense or war at all. Like, the things that win wars are things like strategies and tactics and the ability to, like, put three guys on one and the ability to survive against that until, you know, your friends show up. So it's weird that, like, we have this form that's, like, we would see in a, in a dueling context. It's not like the Jedi and Sith are in Renaissance Venice, for example, and we're having, like, vendettas where we meet on the street. They're in actual wars, a great hyperspace war, if you will. Um, I say, you Sith Lord, I shall meet you in six weeks at the old oak tree. Yeah, and that's kind of what Makashi seems to, like, want to come out of, and this, does, this seems to be a weird thing for the result. But it turns out that it's not very good for war and things like that because Form 3 comes around, Seresu, which is to defend against blast or fire, be a very defensive style... Um, where you move your saber to be able to deflect blaster bolts and things like that and send them back at people. By the way, I think it's really interesting that all the way back in like 2001, uh, expanded universe authors were, had this idea that you know what you should do against lightsaber people is shoot them. Yeah. 
You just just shoot them. Not don't be like Boba Fett and just choose to fly within lightsaber reach of people to like do like gunfight combat. Um which is what you see him do a lot in the expanded universe, and it's kind of depressing. <laughs> um, uh, form four, Ataru, is um, kind of like summarizes like the flippy stuff form and the ability to use movement and agility and things like that. Um, and when people talk about Ataru, they're always thinking of Yoda in episode two and Qui Gon in episode one, as if those two have the same fighting style. Yeah, I mean, you know, while we both love our Star Wars lore, I challenge you to look at clips of those two fights and see anything at all that those two, like, those two Jedi are doing in common. I mean, they do a jump spin cut, but everyone does in the prequels. I mean, the, the, um, it's also really interesting, like, if you go back to this, this fight saber stuff, how... Uh, forms seem to kind of react against each other. Yeah. Um, one of the other things you see in Form 4 lore fairly frequently is the idea that Ceresi was just too defensive. And you can't actually win many fights by just deflecting blaster bolts and parrying somebody else's lightsaber. At some point, you have to actually attack. Mm -hmm. And... Like we'll go into when people apply these forms of lightsaber too. That just this doesn't this doesn't usually result in good fencing. Form three doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, form five is a uh, gem. So um, this is portrayed as like Vader's form, Luke's form, um, standard angry Kenjutsu lightsaber of the original trilogy. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's true. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and. This sort of is a form that emphasizes aggression and um, driving through somebody. By the way, all these forms are also associated with a weird Star Wars fictional animal. Um, I don't remember them all except for like Makashi's, like the way of the Issa Lemiri and stuff like that. Form, <laughs> form 5 is the form of the Rancor. Ah, it's the form of the Rancor. No. Isn't there a form of the Bantha? No, wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> oh, shoot. Am I remembering that wrong? Is 6 Rancor? Anyway, there's also these are also associated with animals. <laughs> but five is like the sort of it, driving aggressive. I'm gonna cut at you lots and like have a very aggressive like posture in my form. Um, like the prototypical like position I think of is when like Luke's getting ready to like fight. Sometimes he has like that Jodan no Kamai Vomtag posture. Sometimes there's uh, you also see form five is one of those weird ones that. Uh the lore splits into two halves. You've got Gemso, which is the supposedly the lightsaber kind of centric version of it, where I'm battering through people's defenses or just kind of overwhelming them with uh, the strength of my attack. Um, and it's uh, the other form of it is called Xian, which is taking the blaster deflection of form three with and having a greater emphasis on, I'm not just going to deflect your blaster bolts, I am going to bat them back at you. Mm -hmm. Like, and this, this is reflected in, in um, Knights of the Old Republic, um, where, like, these forms eventually start giving you, like, bonuses. Like, this bonus gives you plus three against blaster file, but only plus zero <laughs> against melee. And um, occasionally makes you worse at fighting some things. Yeah. Um, the uh, next form is form six, uh, Nemon, which is... Supposed to kind of be the jack of all trades for him, and the the fluff that kind of goes into it is Jedi have to spend so much time learning how to be diplomats and doctors and policemen that you really don't have time to be like you know learning a real real full form. So they basically took kind of created an MMA of lightsaber forms and took the lessons and tried to distill it into Nemon. Um, ostensibly, this should sound like the best. You would think. You would think. <laughs> um, Certainly better than just saying. Well, the last form was a failure, so let's do something completely different. <laughs> yeah, and like it's the same way that like if you can't punch, kick, grapple, and all that, then you probably can't fight. Um, you have to be able to do all things at least passively. The the issue with Nemon, though, in Fluff, is that every single user of it was killed on Geonosis in the old canon. It is like portrayed as a bad form. Why? No one can really say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, it's it's unclear, and I think this is the uh, you you will find that a lot of these are ways that like nerds think about martial arts, and we say that lovingly. We say that's not as if we are not nerds, nerds who think who, about martial arts. Yeah, <laughs> um, that like martial arts somehow counter one another, or that martial arts like being a jack of all trades is it's like D and D that a bard is worse at being a wizard than a wizard is or fighter is. So he's he clearly the jack of all trades form is the worst, which is not how the world not actually true. works. Um, and, uh, I forget, the six split? Six does not split. Um, seven sort of, kind of splits. Yeah, seven is, uh, Juyo or Vapod. Um, Vapod, if Maze Windu in, um, is Seisi Ten maybe, mm -hmm. uh, do it. And Juyo is ostensibly Darth Maul's form. But it is another aggressive, like, angry man form. Um, and the light side form of it, light side form of it, I know that's weird to say, <laughs> like, uh, Vapod is sort of, it embraces things like anger and the exultation of victory, but in like a healthy coping way, which is weird. Um, and Vapod is kind of this weird niche that like, it's, it's in the same way that Mace Windu gets a special lightsaber because Samuel Jackson is cool and likes purple. If you get the feeling that he also gets a cool lightsaber for him because Samuel Jackson is cool. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, the People sometimes talk about Vapad as if it's the sort of uh, magical ability to channel somebody's inner darkness um, I, and sort of like use it as a superconducting loop is a phrase you will hear in the lore of lightsaber combat. It's like but, when an angry teenager like punches a hole in the drywall. He channels his <laughs> inner darkness, like drinks a lot of monster, he like loses at Call of Duty, just BAM through the wall, Vapod. It's really kind of hard not <laughs> to see that, as Ryan said, uh as somebody just thinking, Well, I bet Sam Jackson has a lot of inner darkness. He seems like a real edgy kind of actor. I mean, if you look at Mace Windu in the films, there's nothing to suggest that he's a particularly dark or edgy kind of Jedi. Yeah, he's got like, you know, this isn't like, you know, Pulp Fiction like yeah. Jedi. And yet, apparently, no one can look at Mace Windu without going, remember Pulp Fiction? Yeah. And like, somehow Darth Maul has the same fighting style. And essentially, Vapod is, is believed to be like a recovered form, like a lost form, which makes. Not a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes you, you, or you'll hear about it as uh, the perfected form of Form 7, uh, which implies kind of weird things. Like, is the Jedi Council, you know, like, reviewing people's lightsaber form curriculum and saying, like, yes, complete Form 7 now is. Yeah. And, and if so, on what basis? And we have additional sort of supplemental forms, like we see stuff like Jarkai, the idea of using two lightsabers, Tricata, the idea that you could turn your lightsaber off to go past the lightsaber guard and cut somebody. And these aren't really encapsulated as like in the forms. And also form zero, the form of not fighting, which is, <laughs> sounds, sounds deep, but come on. Anyway, so, <laughs> um... I know we've been ragging on these uh, because, uh, in a sense, you, you know, the more you learn about the way fighting with swords or sword-like weapons works, the sillier they sound. Um, and, but in another sense, that's not true. Um, so the first and, like, maybe simp like most obvious question people ask when they learn about these are, can you do that in real life? And the literal answer is no. It's not like, there's no source book out there, you know, from the early 2000s, which records the official kata of, uh, or velocities, if you want to use the Star Wars term. Yeah, velocities um, and doulons. <laughs> um, you know, like the official way to do any of these forms. There are no, like, there are no actual moves you can learn. Uh, it's not like a constructed language like Klingon or Quenya or, to a lesser extent, Mandalorian, uh, where you can actually like learn how to speak those languages even though they are fictional. Uh, lightsaber forms literally don't exist in the sense that nobody at Lucasfilm has ever written them out. This does not, of course, stop people like us from trying to come up with 
you know, uh, kind of fan made, uh, fan made versions of these martial arts, mm -hmm. um, which can be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, um, it's a hundred percent a fun project. It, it, it you know, it be, especially because this is sort of the uh, kind of like a non martial artist's v vision of martial arts. It's really fun to kind of look around at different cultures and think like, well, what, you know, if Makashi is supposed to be the dueling form and you see, you know, you see uh, Count Dooku holding his lightsaber in one hand like this, well, gosh, what kind of real fencing might that actually look like? Or, um, uh, you know, and you'll hear a lot of people compare it to rapier fencing, which I personally think is not true. It's... It's not. Like, how many stringere does uh, Count Dooku do when someone has their lightsaber out? Is he finding? He's, is not, he, like, mm. he's not like, yeah. you know, doing, uh -huh. like, doing <laughs> cavazione or anything like that. It doesn't look a thing like rapier. It looks like what state, it looks like stage fencing because it is, which is nothing wrong with that. Stage fencing's cool, but trying to make that analog rapier fencing, it's like, well, you're not going to look like Count Dooku, which in canon supposedly is this Makashi guy. Right. Uh, similarly, like, even though Bob Anderson in the original trilogy did end up being influenced by Kendo, uh, you know, and those movements, uh, y if you actually look at Kendo fighting, it does not look like, uh, you know, what Luke and Vader are doing in their fights against each other. It yeah. just, it just doesn't. It would be super cool if one of them went like, ah! and then like, you know, did the stomp and everything, and then like ran by each other, like for the full commitment, but it, it's not what they do. Um, you know, and similarly, something else you'll, you'll sometimes hear people do when they look, when they try to do kind of um, form-based breakdowns of various fight scenes, is they'll look for like snapshot moments and say, aha, he's changed form. As if, like, passing through, you know, passing through this, th this uh, position means I am now in Form 5, and the next thing I'm going to do is try to overwhelm my opponent with strength, as opposed to Form 4, which is to overwhelm him with movement, or Form 7, which is to overwhelm him with, I don't know, ferocity? Yeah. How is that different from strength, by the way? It's not really clear it's once really you try clear. and break it down. Um, and, you know, uh, the Obi-Wan is uh, the guy, the character that people bring out as uh, supposedly the master of Form 3. Um, it's not really clear how this is at all defensive, or at any rate, more defensive than this which is the, like, kind of the snapshot that people associate with Form 4. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, just not how, that's just not how guards work in fencing. It's just, it's not, but it does interest, it does tie in the way with how nerds think about martial arts, which is not, you know, again, it's not remotely disparaging, but like when, when you know, before we had, we had, when we had kung fu movies back in the day, we'd be like, oh, this guy is, is Mantis now, and oh, he switched to, like, Tiger, and, like, these hand postures that we think, like, Ah, uh, this guy is now he's fighting with a different animal style, and like he's gonna try to overcome his opponent and change his strategy. And this is the way we tend to view media, and like, oh, that's how we those postures and those keynotes, and that's not entirely divorced from martial arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the, you know, part Certainly of the reason is a salute. Yeah, like when we see like you know Hungar salute versus like. Sorry, like, I gotta get that Hungar salute. I'm getting to Pac May now. <laughs> versus Pac May salute with, like, the left fist and things like that, or, like, Shaolin. Uh, we, we do have style markers in, like, Eastern martial arts, and we have them in Western martial mm -hmm. arts with, like, Bolognese, like, entries and things like that. Um, and, you know, it, it's also true that uh, to a certain extent, you can look at the way people fight and make educated guesses about how they were trained mm -hmm. um it's never 100 percent. it's not like and, and it's it, it, it it's a very holistic kind of thing it's not like you can look at one particular cut that somebody throws and go aha clearly you were trained in 
You were trained in the early 15th century art of Armazare, as exemplified by Fiore de Libere. Yeah. But you might be able to look at the course of somebody's entire fight and sort of the way they respond to problems and go, okay, decent odds that guy is an Armazare fighter. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, they, they could just be a really wrestly KDF fighter. There's just as much wrestling in, like, Meyer and the KDF corpus, but yet, like, the way, especially when we reconstruct arts, that people have, like, emphasized about those systems and thought about those systems, you can at least kind of tell. It's the same where if you see a longsword guy who's never picked up a rapier, but he still kind of does that longsword shuffle block <laughs> thing kind of, like, you can, you can kind of tell, it's like, this guy does German longsword, he's just doing this for tournament funsies. Um... And so in that sense, like, you know, the idea that there could be different forms of lightsaber fighting is not crazy. No. Um, n not at all. The, um, so, but the, uh, the way systems really kind of break down in the real world is more about, uh, more about their tendencies and their kind of philosophical mind, like, approach to the fight, um, than it is about, well, you know, they hold this particular position mm -hmm. or something like that. So um, that brings us to what really kind of gets us excited, which is that in another sense, like, well, let me just add, put it to you. Um, how reasonable is any of this as a way to think about fighting? Um, both not really and really. It, it's kind of the same, like, so even in boxing, we have that idea of like, you know, the slugger versus the outfighter versus the infighter, like the ways you like to approach fighting, the techniques you prefer in your preferred range. And if we think about this in those terms of like, I'm a very defensive guy, I, I don't like to make attacks and things like that. We can, we can use these forms as an interesting like mental exercise to think about, well, okay, if I put myself in the, the mind space of this form, and it, this sounds kind of mystical, but it's, you see this in like Japanese koryu bujutsu and like other arts of like, I gotta put myself in the mindset of this art, it must transform me. And after all, I mean, we are talking about Jedi here, so sure, yeah. mystical is fine. <laughs> mystical is fine. And like, this is already like, you know, there, let, let's not like poo poo the idea of it being, oh, this is not a real martial art because it's mm -hmm. people playing with lightsabers with lightsaber fighting. Some groups being like, we hate forms, we just want to hit people with lightsabers. Others being like, no, we love forms, we want to do kata, we want to do this like, an, like, a, like a budo kind of thing. Both approaches are just fine. But when we think about them as approaches to fighting, like a martial art kind of transforms you, especially mm -hmm. like a Japanese kodu art where you're doing like mental exercises and things like that. But, like, it is perfectly possible and reasonable, done well, to basically be like, I'm going to put myself in Suresu mode, it's because I'm a defensive guy, and I'm going to fight this way, I'm going to create forms that make me move in this particular way that is defensive. Mm -hmm. It's also true, like, even in a, you know, a very practical, I just want to hit people better than they hit me sense, that, um, most fighters only really ever come up with one you know, kind of one mode that they're good at. Mm -hmm. But a really good fighter has multiple modes they can pick from because it is true that uh, I might be up against somebody who is a, uh, you know, who I know is either a really good infighter or just really loves infighting, however good they are at it or not. And that might mean that I need to kind of like, to optimize my chances of beating that person, I might need to change my preferred style um the you know uh so um real life example uh ryan is a much better infighter than i am and if i fight him like i need i need to know uh like like i i, I need to kind of have from the beginning of the fight in my head like i've got to keep my distance from this guy um Whereas against other people that, frankly, like I know I can out wrestle, and there aren't that many of them, but they exist. Like against those people, uh, you know, I I uh, I would do better to kind of switch on the like okay like the infighter mode, mm -hmm. um, and similarly, like one of the things that makes Ryan a good fencer is that he may be good at infighting. But 
He doesn't have to. That's that's the key, is you should be able to change. Like, against beginners, for example, I'm very cagey, very defensive. I'm normally a very aggressive fighter, but against beginners, you can't trust them to do the right thing. They'll, yeah. they'll do something, like, really st stupid and suicidal. But <laughs> like get crazy. Yeah, but, like, uh, uh, there are no ties in sword fights, and I don't get credit for form. So, I'm... You know, you just change your style as opposed to like whining, oh, beginners need to be less suicidal. They do for their own sake, but you should be able to beat a suicidal person. If you're an aggressive person, you got to be able to change your style. Um, I've fenced people who like do reconstructive lightsaber forms and they do like Seresu, for example, and they just tend to parry and back up. And I back somebody up for like almost the length of a football field because they have no other tactic and they never attack back because they have this idea of Seresu. It's like, oh, I guess wait and defend myself and that guy will get tired. Well, newsflash, I wrestle, my conditioning's okay. <laughs> like, you You'll know, get tired first and I know where you're going because you're the one backing up and I can see. Right. Um, the, uh, you know, it, it, it's in, in somewhat later lightsaber lore and I don't know about like from the 2000 around like 2010 forward you start seeing people be less enamored uh, authors I mean in the Star Wars universe uh, you start seeing them be less enamored with the idea that a particular Jedi would have one form that he was the master of and you start hearing them talk about um, well so and so's fencing is a mix of you know this form and that form and this other form um, the the latest maybe highest profile canon um, example we got of this was in rebels where the grand inquisitor is telling is, is mocking Kanan um, by saying uh, you know I know who your master was and how you were trained and in close quarters uh, Master Balaba relied to a ridiculous degree on Form 3, which is a much more reasonable statement on both sides. Like, yeah. you know, on the one hand, that a master would train their student, you know, their student, okay, in this particular kind of situation, here's what you need to rely on. Mm -hmm. And also the idea that somebody else who knows that could use that knowledge to beat them. Because, mm -hmm. like... Unlike early Seresu lore, there are no unbeatable forms or choices in fencing. There are only choices. Yeah, um, and there's you know plenty of stuff in our historical sources where they talk about some schools claim to teach an invincible blow or an invincible <laughs> parry or unblockable yeah. blow. And every single source we have that talks about like the idea of masters teaches teaches that it's a bunch of crap and it has a counter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in fact, one of uh, uh, Dan Legokie specifically speculates that all of this talk about, like, well, my maestro has unbeatable attacks may have just come from people who quit their fencing too early and are basically just saying, well, I don't know, I could never beat the maestro, <laughs> so I guess he must have some unbeatable secrets. And yeah. No, dude, you couldn't beat your teacher because you took six months of fencing and then quit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, you know, like the, and, and, and if you kind of, if you come at, come at these uh, forms as sort of like tactical choices you can make or philosophies, they start to make a lot more sense. Um, except for form one, which never makes sense ever. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> but form two, the, you know, allegedly kind of the dueling and precision form. Um, well, certainly there are times when you're up against somebody and you know, I'm going to have to beat this guy on technique. He's bigger than me. He's faster than me. He's stronger than me. But I'm pretty sure, like, my technical knowledge of fencing is better than his. And that can work. Yeah, um, like the idea of like throwing like sniping attacks, like not being particularly aggressive, like going for hands, and um, I will continue to go on the record to say if you reject hand sniping as like <laughs> bad, that you were a loser and making loser excuses. Especially in a Star Wars context. And especially in a Star Wars context, there, we have a long history of cutting people's hands off. Yeah, that's like like favorite shot number one is taking people's hands off. <laughs> um, you know, I I don't want to. 
uh, I, I don't want to name any names, uh, but I can think of like I can think of a couple of fights I've seen you do um, at in high level competition where you were up against somebody who was as fighty as you, and you won by saying, "Okay, you know what? I know more tricks than you." <laughs> yeah. I, like that's basically like yeah this guy's just as mean aggressive as me we're gonna like I don't know his wrestling I think I can out wrestle him but he's got like 50 pounds on me so it's like I'm just gonna use shenanigans at this point yeah. um, similarly you know um, as much as we've kind of ragged on Seresu there are also times when like you really do need to play defense at least long enough to figure the other guy out mm -hmm. you can't do it forever um, and I don't think, you know, I, I think people who interpret Soraya even in a Star Wars context as kind of never attacking are reading their Star Wars lore wrong. I mean, they're not, they're just not <laughs> watching the movie. Obi-Wan clearly attacks people. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> the, but, you know, but, but that is also a real thing when, um, in the context where you don't know very much about the other person. Uh, generally better to play defense until you have some sense of kind of what their what their tendencies are um, it's also true that there are some people where you just know they are incredibly aggressive and frankly you can let them come to you mm -hmm. and use you know and you use that against them um, which is oftentimes a better choice than saying oh yeah well I can out aggress you there you know, if you look at your bolognese sources, you, you cannot really attack somebody without giving some kind of tempo. Whether you parry, you get parried, that's a tempo you gave. You lift your foot to step in the distance, that's a tempo you gave. Like, you can, you, it's kind of hard to come in without giving somebody the place sometimes, mm -hmm. if you're like a silverite of some, of some stripe. The, it, it's very hard for them to attack without giving you an opportunity to parry repose or do some kind of attack. So sometimes defense... While it can be um, chancy, can uh, can prevail. Yeah, defense with knowledge. Yeah, works well. Like mere defense does not. Yeah, you just get overwhelmed the more you try to parry or do stuff like that. Um, I I, uh, I I don't. There are some people who disagree about this, but uh, I really feel like the last fight we see between Obi Wan and Darth Maul is kind of a perfect example of that, where you see uh, where. Obi-Wan, in fact, plays the entire fight defensively, and he sort of uh, baits Maul into attacking by making Maul feel like, uh, you know, like, like he's seen some weakness in Obi-Wan. And in reality, uh, the whole time, Maul is uh, just kind of falling into Obi-Wan's trap. And you can see even in the way that he finishes things, where Maul goes for the the move that, uh, the, the kind of like hilt check up that finished Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan clearly anticipated that. And in that sort of situation where your opponent is in fact like really reading, like giving you signals about what they're about to do, um, you know, a Soresu kind of mindset is really powerful, mm -hmm. especially in that sort of situation where uh, like Maul, he doesn't think he's giving signals mm -hmm. and in reality he is um form four which is i i think the most you can say about form four is it's, it's, it's movement based and athletics based well that's certainly a real thing too i mean it's certainly never a good fencing to be unathletic yeah like the idea that like you know you you some amount of you can have enough technique to overcome an athleticism differential while true is not the surest and quickest path. It's best to be both yeah. athletic and have technique. Um, and no matter how good your technique is, it's generally enhanced by better footwork. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, you see people in, um, in our area like, uh, Marcus and McKinsey from the Atlanta Fry Factor, very quick, very nimble, very athletic, like people who could just out move you and outwork you. Because um, they are young and athletic and spry. Yeah, and that that right that in in re reality that doesn't look like they're doing backflips over your head, um, but that kind of almost uh, football player kind of agility in their ability to move here quickly, 
and move somewhere else quickly. Like you really can outtime somebody that way, even if you're not flipping and you know like sprinting all over the ring. Yeah, and there are people like that who can just outwork you, outmaneuver you, have like the better cardio. You know, obviously, just moving for movement's sake. Um, one, you'll, you'll get tired eventually. Um, even though we have short bouts in fencing, it's hard to keep up the pace the entire period. But also you have... Um, like, you'll get intercepted yeah, if you're just moving for no good reason. Yeah, you, you, it gives a tempo. Just moving for a movement's sake. Eventually, especially because if we're in a ring, I can eventually cut you off, and now you can't do it out of distance anymore, and then you're going to give me a tempo. Yeah, and, you know, even if... Uh, I, I know we've been talking a lot about historical fencing, but if you think about even in a Star Wars scenario, all fights take place in a space. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we never, you never see somebody fighting on an actual football field or, you know, kind of this giant featureless plane where you can move forever. Um, and in a lot of ways that makes like having good control of your movement even more important because you don't have forever to move and there might be features in the you know in in the fight space that mean not all places are equally good um someone may have the high ground i mean you never know <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um the um and, and by the way i mean as funny as that is uh that's also sort of an example of kind of like uh unexamined or purposeless movement leaving you open I mean, the reason that Anakin gets his limbs cut off is because he goes for a move. He goes for a movement, which was the wrong move, even though it was very athletic and very fast, and you know, mm -hmm. powered by the Force and all that. You go to the wrong place, and you get stuff cut off. Like had Anakin like just come on shore like a normal person, he would be at a disadvantage still. But he. You know, he'd have better odds than I'm going to try to finish this fight and I'm going to out, out athletic and out athlete Obi Wan and give him all the tempi I can. Yeah. <sighs> um, so let's see. Um, moving on to form five. Um, it's not necessarily the most PC thing to say, and it's not definitely not always the most polite competition tactic. Um, but it is also true that just hitting the dude really freaking hard, like. Mm -hmm. That will work. <laughs> you can you can just body somebody throwing aggressive like blows, and if they have any timidity in them, which many people do because we don't really like unless they've had exposure to martial arts or the military or like a you know we're not accustomed to violence. And even in a play context, if you just amp up violence better than the other person, it's easier to win. For that matter, I mean, even in a real context, right? Like, not everybody. Uh, not everybody psychologically adjusts to the idea of, well, I'm, oh, oh, this is a serious fight, you know, at the same rate. Mm -hmm. Just getting there f sooner than the other guy does give you a huge advantage. Um, even if, you know, 30 seconds from now, he's going to be just as amped up as you, he's got to live to get there. Yeah. The moment you, like, are fighting somebody in the ring and you put your parry up and sparks fly off your weapon because they're just swinging for the fences, you're that director warrant for contact, you're like, oh, this is a real fight now, and you, gotta, you, you, gotta, you get that panic response, and it's scary. I'm not saying, that, again, that you should ever do this in the ring, but it is something interesting about the psychology of fighting that you should take into account. Right, and it's, you know, you can you can imagine lightsaber, like, kind of a lightsaber philosophy around that, um, you know, you don't you don't, you don't need to have a lot of strength or even uh, structure behind a lightsaber if you're just cutting through meat. But if you're worried that the other person might have a lightsaber that can actually block yours, then sure, you know, like then just kind of flicking your weapon at them um, does put you at risk of somebody else with a stronger, more structurally sound attack literally just blowing through your attack and then you know you've been cut by your their lightsaber and maybe yours too yeah um the it's also true that you know i mean this is something we see in historical sources um i can think of a couple of places in the kdf corpus 
where the uh, where the the author literally says this is a technique that should be driven with some strength. Yes. Like you know, technique is good. Um, technique plus strength is better. You you look at the anonymo and he says that your cut should make him feel like you're a demon come to whisk away his soul. That like every blow should like terrify that man. Yeah. If you're doing it for real, making the other guy afraid is not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and we've already kind of talked about Niman. Um, you know, we're like honestly, in a from a fencing perspective, it almost seems like Niman is what everybody would learn. Like. This is real fighting, and all these other pieces of forms are just kind of like parts of fighting, yeah. which you need to master so that you can deploy them, I don't know, in cramped quarters, like Depa Bilaba apparently believed. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in the appropriate time, at the appropriate moment. Um, and then Julio, you know, Julio too, um, well, Ryan already kind of brought up, like this, you know, Julio was thought of as the ferocity form and what does that look like in physical motion is sometimes hard to describe um particularly because allegedly Darth Maul and uh Mace Window in their fight choreography both use um like staccato bursts of attacks to overwhelm their opponent which uh you know if you watch Mace Window versus versus Palpatine is just objectively untrue yeah <laughs> um for perfectly you know explainable reasons that had to do with uh the rushed nature of filming that fight and not having a lot of uh prep time for the choreography but like what sam jackson is doing as somebody who is not you know in real life a martial artist versus what ray park is doing in episode one in a f fight that they pre prepped for months, and Ray Park is an actual martial artist. He's a wushu guy, he knows how to move. I mean, just <laughs> clearly these two fight choreographies have nothing in common, but, you know, we'll ignore that. Yeah. Um, but, but psychologically, you know, like Ryan was saying, the idea of just being fiercer than the other guy, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it's that intangible, that, uh, what the Japanese call seme, mm -hmm. or just the idea of pressure, that I can just exert psychological pressure on you and make you make mistakes. And this is something that can only kind of be taught, but not really. It's something you wind up internalizing. And it's also like, what kind of is embodied in Vapod, and you could see this in a yeah. lot of people who like to compete, is, um, is the love of winning and the joy of victory and that wanting to win, that drive. Mm -hmm. And that like competitive ferocity, like you know, where you, I've taken my mask off before and been bleeding into my eyes, and I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> that, that 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 that's kind of Vapod in many ways. Yeah, you see the absence of Vapod too in a lot of um, in in some tournaments. Um, stereotypically, you see this in women's tournaments, although I don't think that's really what women's tournaments look like anymore. No, certainly not down here in the southeast. Um, good job, guys. Um, but you you uh, you see it, you see it in rookie, uh, you see it in rookie tournaments sometimes. Um, oftentimes you just see it in kind of rookie fighters where you can like just look at the match and go, oh man, that guy is just literally afraid of his opponent, mm -hmm. and he's kind of like you know, and they're they're kind of like, you can see it sometimes when people parry, they literally cower behind their sword, um, and that guy's gonna lose. Yeah. You know, like, uh, the, the, this idea that, like, there's a psychological battle going on in a fight is not kind of, uh, orientalist, mystical bullshit. Like, that is real. And you, you see it in, like, tournaments with, like, where people who have not competed are competing and, like, um, uh, we're a hobby, as, as people know, we're a hobby that attracts nerds. We're, we're not... Yeah. Like, a lot of martial artists do not come into this hobby. The martial artists that do come into this hobby tend to do a bit better because they've been used to fight. They not have to deal with social, psychological elements that encourage them not to fight, which is a lot of the cases you see with, like, mm -hmm. women, where it's, like, this BS patriarchal thing where it's, like, oh, women don't hit, and you're encouraged to, like, be nice. Um, you see them on, like, newer people who are 
like in, in rookie tournaments you see it like for guys sometimes who are way smaller mm -hmm. and this is why it's good that we have these divisions by the way like we have like p tournaments for people who feel c comfortable competing against people at their skill level or the same gender as them for whatever reasons those may be and you know we shouldn't have to defend those because there's just different psychological elements at play um, that go into competition yeah. and Vapod kind of talks about those in a way. Yeah, I mean uh, so the, you know, so um, can you do this stuff for real? In a sense, no. Um, are, is this a sensible way to divide, you know, to kind of like come up with the, the, the fictional martial arts associated with a lifesaver? In a sense, no. But in another sense, yeah, you know, like this is a very reasonable way to think about kind of the, the elements that go into good fencing. Um, the take it to an extreme and it probably results in bad fencing. Mm -hmm. But you even kind of see that in Star Wars lore too, or at least more recent Star Wars lore uh, that kind of gotten away from the idea of a uh, rock, paper, scissors relationship where like form five always beats form two because yeah. Cause, cause Anakin beat Dooku and that's what Matthew Stover said in the novelization. I mean, even Form um, 7, because we spoke so highly of like, the psychology of it, like, take it to an extreme, it's bad fencing. Think about how many dude bros you see who are like 300 pounds, and the first thing they do against somebody who's 125 is like, swing the mightiest Zorn how they can to try to intimidate and bully them. Yeah. Or like, This is an issue that like, has been brought up by my friends in Asphinges and lots of other groups. It's like, people will just try to straight up bully you because they think they can. And does that make them a good fencer? No, not really. It also doesn't always work. I mean, yeah. like, sometimes it does, but you also find people who really do have the technique or the presence of mind to deal with that, and if that's all, you, if all you've got in the tank is, well, I'm scarier than you, and you run up against somebody who's just not afraid of you, you're gonna lose. I mean, again, you see that even in Star Wars. That's why Maul loses to Obi-Wan. All he's got is ferocity and obi-wan just like isn't scared of him yeah and so he what like he plays maul from that from the beginning of that fight and walks all over him and beats him in like two moves which is by the way like the most realistic depiction of sword fighting in all of star wars yes 100 percent my favorite lightsaber fight not just because it's my boy obi-wan um so you know uh in in other ways you really like these are very real um and kind of a cool way to think about uh think about fighting um and, and it gets at some things which you know honestly historical texts which tend to be tend to have a very heavy focus on technique mm -hmm. um sometimes you know we forget about um to our detriment one of the best things about like for example the anonymous bolognese is the fact that he talks about like you can go forward aggressively, attacking brutishly. You can go forward defending yourself. You can go forward doing a mix. You can stand still doing these things. You can retreat doing these things. He kind of gives nine ways of which you can move. And he says, interesting, all of them can be done artfully and with malice. He doesn't say attacking brutishly, going forward, just attacking, attacking, mm -hmm. not really paying attention to parries, can be done artfully, um, which is interesting. Some martial arts are like, especially people who don't really understand German Longsword and are just like, oh, German Longsword <laughs> is aggressive and about attacking, which means they didn't read the book. Um, like, they, th this idea that, you know, a martial arts is like, this is an aggressive style, defensive style. The Anonimo rightfully points out, we can see in these forms, these lightsaber forms, um, all of them, in fact, can be done artfully and well. Right. Um, so, uh, I hope that was interesting for you guys. Uh, we will be back with more videos, and uh, until then, we've got about 12 hours left uh, on May 4th. But remember, the 4th will be with you always. always.